Hello everybody, my name is Caleb and welcome to your first Node.js tutorial. This is going to be all about writing JavaScript for the backend. I also have a JavaScript for the front end, a React series, if you're interested. This is going to bring you from being basically a complete beginner to having a proficient knowledge in writing JavaScript for Node.js. Node.js made it to the top of the list for the 2020 Stack Overflow survey, being the most common web technology with React.js being a close second. Often these are used together, Node for the backend and React for the front end. So it's a pretty in-demand language and a great tool to learn. One of the big reasons being if you just want to learn one language, JavaScript, you can build the front end and the back end of applications, which can save you time and effort to maintain and build applications. But fortunately, a lot of the principles learned in Node.js or other web frameworks are going to be very similar. So these skills will transfer to other languages as well. So we're going to get started from complete scratch. We're gonna talk about how to install and initialize an application. I'm gonna be doing this on Windows, but you can also use Mac or Linux. It should be fairly similar. Once you have it open in an editor, the code is going to be the same. Now, Node.js can work on any platform, so whether you're using Mac, Windows, or Linux, you should be able to follow along with this series. Now, before we get started, I wanted to say a special thank you to the sponsor of this series, which is Filestack. You can get started with Filestack using the link down below, but this is a file uploader, which will allow you to easily transform and deliver images to users. So it gives the ability to transform images if you have the need for the user to be able to modify images or for you to do it yourself, and a delivery network for distributing these images across the web. Additionally, we have some interesting features such as URL-based transformations to easily modify images as well as conversion between different document formats and audio and video conversion as well. So this easily integrates with JavaScript with an easy example right here. So if this sounds useful to you, check them out using the link down below. To get started, we are going to download Node, which you can get at nodejs.org. So from nodejs.org, you can go for either long-term support, this is what's recommended for most users, or the latest version for latest features. I'll go with LTS. So this is 18. If you're watching this in the future, it might be a newer version. Once this is done, we will open the file and go through the setup wizard. Nothing too crazy. And I'm just going to keep all of the defaults and I'm going to automatically install necessary tools and then hit install. Give this a few moments and there we go. As you can see, it is installing some of the other requirements. Ah, this is literally taking forever. I'm gonna go run a marathon real quick. All right, I'm back and this is done. So we will hit enter to close out of that. And uh, now you can actually open up PowerShell or a terminal. So we'll go with the command prompt here. And you should now be able to say node. And when you do this, you will see a change in the prompt. And now you just have this little caret, this greater than sign. And this is the node interactive mode. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. So this is how we can interact with Node in an interactive way where things are evaluated on the fly, such as five plus five. You can actually see the response there automatically, but if you enter, it'll output that and then bring up a new prompt. So this is an expression that evaluates to 10. We have the plus operator and then two operands, five and five. You can do something similar with strings. So for example, hello, and then plus there, and I put a space there just so it turns out right, and the result is hello there. Now notice the difference in quotes here. You can use single or double quotes interchangeably. I'm just going over some basics here. If you wanted to have double quotes inside of your string, you would use single quotes. So for example, hey there, this will output the same exact thing we just typed, but the actual string itself has double quotes in it now. And the inverse too. So if you wanted a single quote, you could surround it with double quotes, such as there. So that is what you can do with single and double quotes. And you can just go down to the new line. Sometimes I'll do this just to clear off the screen. If you type something out, such as console.log, and inside of parentheses, quotes, hello, and you hit enter, you're going to get two things in the terminal here. 
I wanted to explain this because as you're using this interactive mode, you might see undefined show up quite a bit. So with the fact that we're pretty early on in the series and you might not have a ton of programming experience, I'm going to try to explain this as simply as possible. If you have something such as 5 plus 5, this is going to evaluate to some value and this is what is returned, 10. Some code does not return anything, such as console.log, and when that happens, you're going to see the result undefined. So don't worry about if you see that pop up, it just means that no value was returned. And it just so happens that console.log will also output the value hello, because this is what we gave it. So in that scenario, you're going to see both of those values. If we try another example, such as math.pow, you can pass in a value here, such as five comma two. And what this does is it will take five and raise it to the second power, five times five. Hitting enter, you can see it gives us the value 25. So this is the return value here. Most lines of code are going to return some value, but not all of them will. So here is an example. If we say let D and then assign this a new date, this is a valid assignment. This is going to return undefined. This interactive mode, as I've called it, is also known as a REPL, read, eval, print, loop. It's going to read our input, evaluate it, print the result, and do that in a loop. So the interactive mode is very handy if you just want to experiment with something, try it out, and you don't want to build out a whole project. But oftentimes, you're going to want to build out a more complex project that does a lot of things. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the upcoming videos. How do we go from just the terminal to actually creating files and having a Node.js project. But always remember you can go back to the interactive node if you just want to experiment with things and try some different options. It's a pretty handy tool, so don't forget that it exists. We might see it again throughout this series, but most likely we're going to be working with files. So let's get to that in the next video. Peace out.